Hi. Uh, today I was just assembling my uh, my 18-inch saw, uh, putting it back together. This is the one I built, and I'm putting the blade in, and uh, I got the arbor. It's got to be adjusted. And a lot of people they have a question on how can I adjust my blade. Well, if the blade is crooked or it's not straight, uh, you're gonna have a problem cutting your slabs, and you might actually damage your blade. So, one of the things is that uh, I'm going to show you here how to set it up and you check, especially if you buy a used one uh, and you need to make sure that it's cutting properly or, or it's lined up properly. Uh, so now this is here, the blade is new and I got the arbor in. Let me focus a little bit more here so you could see what I'm talking about. Yeah. And the arbor usually has four bolts. And what I did here is I tightened the bolt just enough to be tight, but at the same time, if I have to move it, I can hit it with the mallet and actually a piece of wood too, it won't hurt. Uh, so you could adjust the, the movement of it, okay, the alignment. Uh, in order to do that, you will need an indicator. And this is, this is the indicator I'm using, and it's... Uh, you can actually buy them from, uh, I think I bought mine from uh, Harbor Freight. But <clears throat> here it is, I mean it's a, it's a magnet base uh, with the dial indicator and uh, what happens is when it moves in you could see the needle also it's moving around and that's how you could adjust it. Now I set it up on a on a vise, and so I'm going to move it in a little bit until it touches the blade, and lock it with the magnet. So now this is locked in in position. Um, what you need to do right now is to adjust uh, the reading. So I have it on one side and what we're going to do is we're going to go from one end to the other end without moving the blade. So <clears throat> this one here, I'll set it up at zero and you can see here the zero and I just release it and then you could move it from one end. one end to the other and see how it's going to move. Okay, let me get here in the to be able to do it. There we go. And you could see it was going zero until it hit the end and now it's about eight thousandths of an inch off. But that's not a big deal because if I put it back down, okay, it's still zero. And if you turn it by hand, you see that it is about eight to ten thousand of an inch wobble on that blade. And you're never going to get a blade that's going to be straight, especially the one we use for cutting um, uh, the slabs. You need it as thin, thin as possible because if you get thick uh, then you're going to cut or waste a lot of material. So we know that the wobble is about uh, 10,000 of an inch to 8,000 of an inch. So if I go from this point to this point and it's only about uh, 8,000 of an inch, I mean that would be okay because uh, it's not going to get, you won't be able to get it uh, better than that unless if the blade is thicker and it's not going to move. Now, this has already been adjusted, and you know, I, I already adjusted that. So, what do you do is, if it's off, so let's say uh, from this point, let's say it's zero, you come down to here and it's about, let's say, 20 thousandths of an inch. Uh, you need to move, you leave it here, and you leave the indicator, and you push on the blade, and if you push on the blade, you're actually going to see the movement 
uh, of the needle. So is it moving, if you push in, is it moving this way or that way? And that will tell you how you're going to knock uh, the artboard, uh, what direction, in order to compensate. All your compensation is going to be half the amount. So if you're going from here to here and the deviation is about 20 thousandths of an inch, then you need to move it 10,000, which is halfway, and then you try it again. And you go back and forth until you get it. Uh, another thing you should do also is uh, you run your feed. Now, I, if I run my feed here, uh, it's going to take me about an hour and a half. I get uh, uh, roughly about five minutes per inch. Uh, so if I'm going to run the feed, which you should, uh, it's going to take about an hour and a half to get across and that's even better than pushing it by hand because it's more accurate. When, when you push it by hand there is a, a the movement here uh, because you're, you're using your hand. Um, so that's that's basically what you need to do. The only thing... This is another way of doing it if you don't have the dial indicator. Uh, you could actually use a pencil and clamp it on uh, your vise, just hold it in a vise and point it at the blade. Um, then you drag your carriage back and forth the same way as you did with the indicator and you could see the distance between the pencil point and uh, the blade and then you could move it and adjust it accordingly the same way. But this is going to be more visual uh, than uh, with the indicator. Uh, however, it will work. The only thing is now we indicate it uh, in this direction, but what about up and down? Because if this is, uh, is tilted, if the blade is tilted, you don't have much of a problem if it is tilted. You, you, all your slabs going to be cut at that angle, the tilt angle, but you don't want them like that. You, you need it to be, to be perfect straight. And in order to get that or to... Uh, figured out how you're going to adjust it is by uh, tightening these bolts up and down. So you could tighten the front or tighten the back and that will move it sideways. Uh, normally you don't need to do much of adjustment if the artwork is straight. And uh, here I have a, an indicator uh, or angle indicator. All you have to do is just set it up on your I'm using this here because it's stronger. You just set it up on your uh, on your vise and set it up to zero. So now it's zero, and you take it, and when you put it on the blade, that should read 90. And I don't think you'll see it, but it's reading 90.1, 90.1 degree. That's that's pretty good. So. I know the blade is up and down, it's straight, and now I know it's also straight that way. So let's recap this, what we did. You tighten the bolt of the arm, but you don't tighten it too hard, just, just enough to hold it, and you'll be able to hit it or adjust it by a mallet. Uh, get your indicator at one point, and then move your carriage all the way to the back and, and see how much of movement you're going to have on that indicator. Okay, now this is just, you could see how thin that blade, by moving it by hand, you could see how much of a movement you could do. So, when you move the whole uh, carriage and the vise all the way to the back and you read your uh, blade, it should be within or within the wobble that you get by turning it by hand. And this one here, it's about 10 thousandths of an inch. So, once you get that adjusted, also make sure the perpendicularity of it is right. And to do that, like we said, use the, um, the angle finder, and you set it up to zero on the vise. So, because your vise is flat this way, but you want to cut perpendicular to it. So when you take the blade and you stick it on the blade, that should read 90 degrees. So you got zero here, 
flip it, it's 90 degrees. And once you get that done, uh, then you're, uh, you're good to go. And your blade is, is ready and, and uh, all the setup is uh, it's good. Now I gotta find or finish the whole thing. Uh, one thing I, I'd like to mention since uh, we're doing it, I'm, I'm, while I'm working on it and I'm changing a few things, and uh, this here, uh, this basically it's a lock and it's a nut with a handle. And if you unlock it, it, it loosen the um, device and it would loosen the movement going in and out, which is your, your, uh, your slap cuts. Usually when, if you don't have this one here and the bushings or um, the vice is kind of loose that it moves on you, uh, you don't know how it's going to cut and that's why you get a lot of ridges uh, from the saw because uh, the vice itself is moving up and down. This here, it will lock it and all you have to do is just lock it in position and it will lock the vise on its guide that's going sideways, not the guide that's moving the vise. It's only for the slab, which is the adjustment of the slab. So when you lock it, it will tighten it and that will be too tight here that is not going to move, it's not going to give you these ridges that you usually find. It's a very simple uh, mechanism that I just built it yesterday, so uh, it works pretty good. Okay, I hope you uh, enjoyed that video because I know there's a lot of people they were asking about it and uh, uh, you know uh, they're having problem with the uh, with their saw and, and how can you adjust it? But this is the main thing for uh, the blade. If the blade is not uh, moving straight, so let's say it's at an angle, especially if it's going in this direction. So I'm exaggerating right now. The blade is like this. Your voice is coming straight. Can you imagine your rocket's coming here straight, but the cut trying to pull it in this direction? And what's going to happen is you're going to damage that blade. You're going to break it, it's going to seize, it's going to stop, and you're going to damage your blade. And I've seen, I've seen quite a few of them. I've seen some that uh, they were damaged, um, not because the blade wasn't even right, because when they, um, uh, they put the rock uh, or they clamp it in the vise, it wasn't clamped tight. So that's another thing, when you clamp your rock, make sure that if it's tight, use your hand, rock it, uh, move it around. If it moves, it's not good. You know, rocks are not flat, it's not straight, so it, it's you got to make sure that it, it's, it's done right. Uh, I use a lot of wedges, you know, uh, small pieces, big pieces, and you wedge your rock in position in order to lock it in, uh, properly. So you got to do that. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video and good luck with your saw.